-hmm. So I just want to go ahead and start by introducing our guest today, as everybody can see here and saw from the title. Uh, Gina Scarpa is our lovely guest. Uh, Gina has, providing, has been providing professional voiceover services uh, to clients across the country and around the globe since 2014. Her, her happy clients include Xfinity, Burger King, Google, Invesco, L'Oreal, Ikea, VSP, <laughs> Cisco, <laughs> Salesforce, and more. <laughs> She's also been nominated for the One Voice Award in 2022, um, which is voiceover of or voiceover artist of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. Gino is also a award-winning teacher and director, uh, receiving the 2019 a uh, Ace Educator of the Year Award in Connecticut. So very decorated, quite the resume. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh you very gosh. much for taking the time to uh, join us here today, Gina. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. I really never could have imagined that I would even be teaching a workshop through Voices when I first joined. And this is such an honor. Kyle and everyone at Voices is wonderful. So if any of you have never reached out to support or talk to anybody on the staff, everybody I've ever encountered has just been so nice to me. So um, I'm super excited. I'm just looking through the names. I see a lot of my friends and students of mine, and I see new names as well. So if we already know each other, hey, thank you for being here. I'm super excited that you came out to watch today. And if you're new, it's great to meet you. So I will just jump right into my presentation. Okay, great. So welcome to getting through a voiceover slump. This is a course that I have taught before with Voice Actors of New York, which is a wonderful Facebook group. So we're going to learn how to take control of the slow times and come back stronger. I mean, Kyle basically covered it. So I will just give you a little bit more info about me. Um, I started in radio in 1998. I was an intern at a local station in Connecticut and was on the air within six months, ended up being on the air in Connecticut and New York for almost 10 years, worked my way up to a morning show, which is like the height of uh, radio, um, eventually burned out. It's, it's a very difficult industry to be in. <clears throat> went on to entertainment reporting and podcasting. I was the editor-in-chief and podcast host uh, for two different reality TV websites, and I interviewed every contestant from every reality show you can think of uh, in the 2000s. So like uh, Survivor, The Amazing Race, American Idol, So You Think You Can Dance, Top Chef, The Real World. Um, I really enjoyed doing it. And during that time, I started doing voiceover part-time in 2014. So besides doing um, podcasting and reporting, I was raising my son, working in my family business, went back to school, got my degree in marketing with a specialization in SEO. And when the pandemic hit in 2020, I decided to throw myself fully in and go full time with this thing that I'd been doing sort of on the side. And I have not looked back since, and it's the best decision I ever made. And I am also, for those of you who know me, I am a super passionate video game player. Uh, I play League of Legends and Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, Rust, Elden Ring. Uh, and, and, and doing video games is one of my favorite, um, it's one of my favorite genres to do. Actually, I haven't even announced it on social media yet, but I, I'll just give you an inside tip. Um, my latest video game project is I play Sarah Kaysen in The Walking Dead, uh, the new video game. So that's pretty exciting. I cried when I found out that I booked it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's enough about me. Let's talk about you and voiceover slumps. So whether you're new or experienced, you're going to go through slumps. Maybe you haven't even encountered one yet, but you're wondering how you should deal with it when you get there. So I like this quote by Audrey Hepburn because she says, I believe in being strong when everything seems to be going wrong. <laughs> it's like the motto of my life. <laughs> I just did a TikTok about this very type of thing. And it's just when the chips are stacked against me, when my back is up against the wall, I feel like that is when I really <laughs> kind of come alive. So um, who likes a slump? Nobody. But sometimes I feel like I thrive in that environment because I'm trying to problem solve my way out of it. And um, I've come up with a lot of good tips that I hope will help you today. So why are you in a slump? Well, let's talk about the four D's of why you might be in a slump. Demand. Is your voice type in demand right now? So you can look at certain trends in the professional world of voiceover. And for example, when the weather starts to warm up and it's springtime, um, a lot of brands tend to use female voices. When the Super Bowl is happening, um, they tend to use people of color for ads surrounding the Super Bowl. So there are just different times of year when different voices are more in demand. And it may not be you right now, and that's okay. Um, 
or it might just be a little slow right now. And that could happen as well. So what about directions? Are you following all the directions in terms of slate, takes, labeling, et cetera? I have a coaching group called Positively Voiceover that I will talk about more at the very end. But we do a weekly workout and, you know, people don't always follow all the directions. I say slate, they don't slate. I say don't slate and they slate. I tell them how to label it and they sometimes mess it up. So sometimes, you know, for me, I, I work on castings as well. When somebody does something like that, for me, it's not that big of a deal. For other casting directors and for agents, sometimes that's a deal breaker right there. Um, and so you never want to give anybody any reason to say no to you. So just make sure that you're checking everything over. And I know it can be confusing sometimes because everybody has a different way that they want things labeled and done. Um, delivery. Are your reads in line with what the client wants? And that's a very subjective thing, right? But <clears throat> as you're reading through the specs, you know, and you're trying to do what they want you to do. You know, are you really delivering what this client or what this brand wants? That's a great question. And distractions. And this is a this is like a self-evaluation question. Are there things going on in your life that are preventing you from doing your best, most creative work? And honestly, a lot of times when you're slumping, the answer is probably, yeah, other things, you know, just taking your attention away. It could be positive things. Like it might be your family or, you know, you, maybe you work a full-time job that you really enjoy, but you also do voiceover, right? So it might be things like that, but there also might be stresses going on in your life. And you kind of carry that into the booth because really you're being yourself in the booth. So you're bringing in all of your life experiences, good or bad into the booth. And if you're having, you know, kind of a tough time right now, it might be distracting you from doing your best work. Okay. So we figured, we figured out hopefully why we're in a slump. Okay. So you're in a slump. If we did the four D's of why you're in it, let's do the three A's of what we're going to do about it. We're going to acknowledge it. We're going to accept it. And we're going to attack it. First of all, it is okay to be in a slump. It happens to literally everybody. You don't need to ignore it. You don't need to fake it. You don't need to act like a superstar on social media. Like it's okay to be going through a slow time. Everyone does. All voice actors from the bottom to the top to celebrities. Everybody goes through slow periods and it's okay. So then accept it. Try not to waste time or energy being angry or sad about it. It's going to happen. So you need to accept what's happening and use it as an opportunity. And when you change the way that you view it, you'll be able to attack it a lot better. So we're going to create a plan with actionable steps that you can take to lessen the duration of the slump, especially in the future. Okay. And that's the most important thing. You are always going to face up and down times, but our goal is to lessen the time. So it's not like a full month of nothing happening or months. Maybe it's a bad week or even in a couple of weeks. That's okay. All right. So first things first, it starts with you. You need to be in the right mindset in order to conquer the slump and start taking action. And that goes back to what I was saying before about, are there things outside that are distracting you and not to waste time and energy being angry or upset or down about it, right? So get yourself in the right mind. And now let's move forward. Let's start from within. First, go easy on yourself. Like I said, slumps happen to everybody. You don't need to talk to yourself negatively about it. Like I suck, I'm bad, you know, or, or angry at the outside world. Nobody ever picks me. How come it's always these people, whatever, right? Just take it easy on yourself. Then get organized. You can use to-do lists, clean up your workspace, find ways to work more efficiently. It can be something as simple as I use Adobe Audition and I started using keyboard shortcuts for my edits. So when I want to normalize something or amplify something, it's just a shortcut on my keyboard and I am so much faster. It's just little things like that to make yourself more efficient, maybe finding new ways to do things that would kind of speed up the process of your everyday life in voiceover. Start small. I'm going to say a lot of things today. <laughs> you don't need to do all of these things at once. You want to start with maybe a few auditions per day or just a few items on your list. And then don't forget self-care. Take time for your, this is something I need to remind myself every day. Take time for yourself, rest, go outside, do something fun, spend time with loved ones. I literally have a whiteboard outside of my booth that has a list of things I need to do to take care of myself. I have to write it down and I have to check it off. Like, did you take your vitamins? Did you take your medication? Did you sit outside? All of these things I need to remind myself. For other people, it comes a lot easier. Okay, so now we've started from within. So these are the ways we're going to attack the slump. First, we're going to look inside. These are things that you can control within your career and your business model. So first, update your website. Do you have a website? If not, let's start there. <laughs> let's get a website through like Wix or something. Okay, but let's assume that we all have a website. 
maybe you rewrite your bio or you add more content. Something that I've been working on during the slow period is updating my website to a brand new one. So I really had like a one page site. I mean, it was great. I liked it. But I feel like with the amount of work that I have booked, I could showcase myself a lot better. So I worked with my sister and my friend who is a web designer, and we've completely redone my website. So if you've ever visited it before, it was voiceoversbygina.com. Now it's just ginascarpa.com. Every single genre I work in has its own page. It has examples of my work. It is very thorough, but this is something that I've been working on for a long time. And this is one of the ways that I'm going to try to get myself through slumps in the future. Okay. But maybe you're like, well, I don't have all that. <laughs> okay. So fine. Maybe you just add a little bit more content about yourself. Take each genre that you work in or want to work in and write a little bit about that and add that onto your site. Also track down your projects. Have you voiced something lately? Find it, share it. If you're allowed to um, add it to your resume. There's a lot of things you can do with just one, literally just one project. You can get a lot of longevity out of it. Check in with clients, reach out to everybody you've worked with in the last six months individually, and just give them a little update about yourself and say, Hey, just, you know, seeing if there was anything you're working on, if I could be, you know, of help to you, whatever. I just did that for all my clients in 2021 because I realized I hadn't talked to them in a while. So I just sent a bunch of emails yesterday. I'm not, I'm not slumping right now. I'm just doing these things because I don't want to only do them when I'm in a slump. I want to be in the habit of doing them on a regular basis. And finally, refill your sales pipeline. Find new leads to reach out to, create or update a spreadsheet if you have one. If you don't, you should, okay? Um, and then bonus tip, create social content. So, you know, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, I think Twitter and TikTok are probably the best for creating content around voiceover. Um, you know, I think Instagram's pretty good. LinkedIn um, can help you make some good connections. Facebook, like, uh, you know, um, <laughs> like they all have their good points and bad, right? But creating some social content might be helpful as well. It doesn't mean that everyone needs to jump on TikTok and suddenly become a voiceover expert. Cause I feel like a lot of people like that's their go-to is like, I'm gonna give you advice about voiceover and I'm gonna create a voiceover challenge. But like, I feel like there's other things that you can do as well that just have to do with voiceover in general or just about you as a person. Because at the end of the day, right? We're just being ourselves. What are we selling to clients, agents, whatever? Ourselves, our personalities. So maybe you wanna create some social content. And then creating connection build relationships in a genuine and authentic way. So first we wanna get social on social media, comment and respond more than you post, comment on other people's things, anything. It could be about anything. It could be about voiceover for me. It could be about video games, food, memes, <laughs> um, TV shows, movies, whatever. Uh, the, or, or create content that, that encourages engagement, which is something that I've been doing as well. Take a workshop, especially with decision makers. So agents, casting directors, get to know them and let them get to know you. That way, when you come across their desk or their computer for your next audition, they're like, oh yeah, Gina, I know Gina. Um, that's the goal. I don't need to book everything that they send me, but I just want them to know who I am. And when they hear my voice right away, whether I slate or not, they are familiar with me. Find an accountability or a cheer group. A little support can go a long way. So having other voice actors that you can talk to and just kind of not complain to all the time, but maybe you do need to vent about something, or maybe you're just trying to problem solve your way out of something. That is where an accountability or a cheer group or a coaching group can come into play and be very handy. And this sounds counterintuitive, but stop talking about voiceover. <laughs> There's other things in life and family, pets, hobbies, travel, literally anything else. Because really at the end of the day, a lot of people don't want to talk about work all day. Now I'm crazy and I'll talk about voiceover all day, every day. I'll talk about on Christmas, New Year's, whatever. But if you're thinking about connecting with casting directors, agents, creative directors, engineers, whatever, like there are other things in life. And a lot of the best relationships that I've made in the industry have been through talking about other things and just creating genuine connections and friendships. Um, when I go into building relationships with people, I'm not trying to necessarily get something out of them. I'm trying to really form a connection. And sometimes those connections pay off and they will come to me and say, Hey, I have this thing that I want you to read for or do great. And other times I have friends that are really big decision makers in the industry and they have yet to do anything for me. And that is okay. I, I'm not here just to get something in return. That's not a good way to handle your business um, or your approach with people. 
relationship building is like gardening. It's kind of cheesy, but it takes time. You need to plant those seeds. You need to water them and you need to be patient and wait. You can't just expect that you're going to reach out to people through marketing or social media or whatever, and they're just going to lose their minds and offer you a job on the spot. It's just not how it goes. And then making the most of voices itself. So what can you be doing within your own voices account to get through the slow times? So first of all, update your profile. Any new or more detailed info in your bio is always great. You also can add new clips. The more, the better. Add uh, and, and tag them completely, meaning you're adding 10 styles and five roles to every clip you're putting up. If you are on voices and you search at the top where you can look for talent, you can search for my name and you can look at the way that I lay out my clips. They're very detailed. They talk about what the clip is, who the brand is or what the industry is if I don't want to say the brand for whatever reason. And then keywords to describe it in the title. I talk about it a little bit more in the description. I use 10 styles and five roles so that when people are looking for somebody, my clips are coming up. That's the goal. And also to help me be a better job match when I'm auditioning. So if there are 50 people that audition and and I see it, but I'm a hun- I'm a 100% voice match, When the client comes back and listens, by default, they're going to be able to sort by job match. So if I'm a 100% job match, but I'm the 50th person, I'm not really the 50th person, right? Because I'm going to come up since I'm a 100% voice match. The way that I do that is by fully filling out my profile, adding clips all the time. The minute I have something new online, I'm almost always downloading it, creating a new clip and putting it up. And maybe you're sitting here like, guess what, Gina? I haven't booked anything. What do you want me to do? I would say either get someone to create clips. So my studio, Positive Voices, we create demos and clips for people, or you can self-produce clips if for for like a site like Voices, if you feel like you can do that in a way that sounds very professional. Some people can, and some people can't. And you might need to get a second opinion on that before you do it. But I will tell you that before I had a million clips to be throwing around and be like Xfinity, Burger King, L'Oreal, like, yeah, okay. That might look very flashy. Before that, I was just writing my own clips or recreating a clip that I had done, you know, years ago, slapping some music under it and throwing it up on voices, you know, I create like, you know, maybe an IVR or a telephone greeting or something like that. I wrote a gateway spot for myself that some people thought was real um, (laughs) because I put a lot of production underneath it. And I kept that for a while and it was doing well for me on the site um, because it was sort of like a sarcastic conversational clip. But anyway, um, definitely something to consider if you have a very like thinned out bio and like just your demo, like it's probably not enough and you need to do more than that. And then create projects, voices launched projects this summer where people can just come to you. You may not be sure how to price things and there are resources that can help you do that. Again, I am happy to help you and talk about projects as well. Um, I have eight that are created right now. I had my friend Anna Marie Yang, who is also on voices, uh, create special like uh, personalized thumbnails for me. So they really stand out and look professional. She made them for herself. I saw them. I said, name your price. I need to have those now. So she made me, um, thumbnails for them and I've already booked some off of projects. And is there anything better than just waking up and getting a booking in your inbox and you didn't even have to do anything. So you need to, you know, try to take advantage of projects as well. And one of the things that you need for projects is number two, clips. So they go hand in hand besides fleshing out your profile, besides raising your job match, you need them to create projects. So if you don't have a lot of clips, I really encourage you to think about doing that. And sometimes maybe over a demo, if you're a newer voice actor, which is something that for um, some of my students that are on this call today and are newer and are joining voices, I have suggested instead of doing a demo, which you're going to pay a lot of money for and outgrow almost immediately because you're new, why not just create a couple of clips? Let's do an online ad. Let's do an explainer video and let's do a corporate narration. Let's do a video game character. Now we have a couple of different genres that are working for us on voices instead of just a commercial demo. So definitely consider that as well. Okay. And then reconnect with your clients on voices. 
uh, um, send a message to any previous clients or anyone who previously messaged you to check in and stay top of mind, you know, because first of all, you don't always see every job that comes through. So you may want to remind clients, Hey, if you think you might want me to read for something in the future, it would be great if you could private invite me. So I make sure that I see it or something like that. Sometimes clients uh, will message you to tell you, you didn't get the job, <laughs> um, which is a very polarizing topic. Some people get super mad about it, but honestly, I always look at it as an opportunity, especially on voices, because that's the only way you're going to be able to communicate with them. If they didn't pick you, but they took the time to message you. Now you have a direct path to message them and check back in with them in a month or two to see if they have anything new going on that maybe you could read for. So take advantage of the relationships that you're building here on voices as well. And take advantage of the resources from Voices. So this month I'm getting to do uh, a few different um, events with Voices, which has been super fun, but they have podcasts, they have a YouTube channel, they have blog articles, they have a support team. Like, are you taking advantage of all the resources on the site as well? Um, maybe and maybe not. Okay, so maybe it's not you, right? Let's, let's go back to just the slump overall. Maybe it's not you, maybe you're innocent, okay? Um, let's look back at 2021 for me. <laughs> uh, all right. We can see that the first half of 2021 wasn't my greatest. Um, it was very slow. And one thing that I knew was that I was sort of just, as my mom would say, flying by the seat of my pants, just doing whatever felt right in the moment and not really making a plan for moments like this. And you're going to see that as time goes on and I'm sort of during this time last year is when I started to realize, okay, I actually need a solid plan because I can't just do what I think in the moment. Like it's a slow day and I'm bored. So I'm going to send some emails or, uh, I don't really know what to do. So I guess I'll update my website. You know what I mean? Like I'm just doing it in the moment and I'm reacting instead of being proactive. And there's a major difference as you will see in this data. So I have a spreadsheet that tracks all of my work, how I got that work and how much I made for the month, how much money is owed to me at any given time, which is always helpful. Okay. So I came off of December of 2020 booking two national commercials for Invesco. And I thought I was on top of the world. And then January slapped me in the face and said, no, you're not. In fact, it's going to be dead and you're hardly going to book anything. And I was like, what is happening? So we're in January of 2021. I'm starting to get really nervous, right? February is slow. March is slow. April picks up. It's decent. May is good. And then June, it's slow again. So the first half of last year was very frustrating to me. I was like, what is going on? started putting these things in place I'm talking to you about today. Okay, let's look at the second half. Here we go. July, good. August, booming. September, great. October, great. November, great. December, booming. No more slow times. N not even like okay times. We are good, great, and booming through the rest of 2021. It was really like just this upward trajectory and not looking back. And anytime that I had a slow, maybe I had a slow week, maybe. I don't think I went through the second half of 2021 not booking anything. And I don't think that's ever happened since, except for maybe like the week of Christmas or New Year's or something. But just in a regular work week, I don't think I've had a week <clears throat> since uh, the second half of last year where I didn't at least book something. Um, okay. So let's look at 2022 so far. I took it through June. So we have January, good. February, great. March, booming. April, great. May, good. June, good. Let's look at, let's go back. Dead, slow, slow, decent, good, slow. I only had one month that I really felt like I was doing super well. And now, sorry. And now you can see that these things don't really come up for me much anymore, but it was the result of a, a lot, a lot of hard work. And I'm still doing it every day. I don't care that, that you look at the second half of this, this booming, great booming, it's not time to slow down. It's not time to stop. Voiceover is an ever-changing, ever-evolving industry. New people are coming into it every day. It is always competitive and there's no time to stop. So that can feel overwhelming at time, but for me, it really energizes me to keep going. I look at the second half of this year. I'm like, this is what every half of the year should look like for me. And eventually I just want to boom, boom, boom all year long. Okay, cool. So maybe it's not you, right? Okay, but maybe it is you. So maybe there's things going on that you're doing that are kind of contributing to slumps. So here are some questions to ask yourself. Okay, is your sound quality up to par and have you had your studio vetted by a pro? A pro engineer, not your friends. Okay, not even necessarily another voice actor. Um, if they know production and engineering, cool, but otherwise I would definitely have an engineer listen to your space. 
Have you done any coaching lately? How about marketing? What are you doing to advance yourself? I will tell you that I still go to coaches all the time. I don't care if I'm full-time able to fully sustain myself doing well, successful, happy, whatever. I like to check in with coaches, uh, different casting directors, and just be like, hey, let me read for you. How does this sound? Let's just check in and see what's going on. Again, the industry is always evolving and I want to be on top of those changes. Okay. Do you know yourself and do you know what you're most likely to book? That is a very hard question. And the truth is that some people don't know themselves as well as they should. And also how you see yourself is different than how the world sees themselves. Something that I tell a lot of my students is when I first started doing voiceover, I saw myself as the sarcastic best friend that kind of made, you know, a lot of jokes and, and like quips and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's me like witty and kind of sarcastic or whatever. And the world said, no, you are the helpful nerdy girl at the Apple store and you will tell us how to install the latest, you know, software on our device. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so yes, I am nerdy and I do try to be friendly and helpful. But what ended up happening was how I saw myself versus how the world saw me ended up changing my entire brand, which has now become meet your new best friend. And it's because I tend to book a lot of warm and friendly things, but also because I try to be a good friend to everyone I meet. I try to make people feel comfortable and welcome when I am talking to them on social media or over Zoom or coaching them. And that really came from understanding how the world saw me and really then realizing this is kind of who I am. I don't know what that like front I was putting up that was like, yeah, I'm sarcastic. I don't know what that was, but, um, but it's really important to kind of understand what you can book. Are you giving your best, most creative efforts to your reads? Maybe, maybe not. There are days that I do some auditions on voices and I was like, those were terrible. I, just, I didn't, I don't know. I feel I'm not really in the zone today. Um, and then I look and I don't really get shortlisted. And I'm like, right, because I'm not doing my best work today. I'm kind of rushing through the day. I have a million things to do. And I'm like, ah, let me just knock out some auditions and go. Um, and they're not that great. Uh, do you, again, do you follow all directions to a T? Do you struggle with self-direction? This is something that I actually do struggle with sometimes. Listen, if you give me a director and he tells me what to do, I got you. Sometimes I have a hard time uh, if I'm not really connecting to a script or I don't have a lot to work with. Sometimes I have a little bit of a hard time getting into it. Um, but if I had someone with me to kind of give me the guidance, I feel a lot more confident. I'm able to do that. So sometimes, you know, on a site like Voices, you're just self-directing all of your auditions. No one is there to hold your hand and tell you, hey, let's try it like this, or, you know, uh, that's too fast, or your pacing is this, or, you know, you're inflecting, you know, like this, whatever. Anyway, um, maybe you struggle with self-direction. Do you know how to competitively quote for jobs? That could be anything from quoting on voices itself to being out in the world and trying to negotiate. Um, if you're not using something like, you know, the GVAA rate guide or gravy for the brain to try to help you, you definitely should look those up as resources and give yourself an idea of what you should be making for a job. I mean, if you're trying to under, if you're trying to under quote, like let's just use voices as an example. Um, if I'm the client and, and let's say their budget is like, you know, 249 to 499, everybody's quoting 499, 499, 499. And here comes some person who's kind of new or just trying to get out of slump. And they're like, you know, 300 bucks. If I'm the client, I'm like, what, why, what's the reason? Listen, why are you quoting low? You're quoting low because you're new, you're slumping and you're like getting desperate for work, or you're trying to hide some bad sound quality. Like, like, strong voice actors, com confident, competitive voice actors with professional sounds. We're not out here quoting $300 when the budget is $499. I'm like, your budget's $499? Great. Then I'm quoting $499. That's what I'm quoting um, or something like that. So when you're quoting low, immediately it kind of gives the client a feeling like, why? Don't get me wrong. There are clients that are out here doing like bargain basement shopping, but, but a lot of them and most of them they, they want it to sound good and they want a professional voice actor. So if you're a voice actor, you need to quote competitively with the rest of us because it's better for the industry. And honestly, it's better for you. Right. Okay. Um, and there, I know, um, there was a study done with voices clients that showed that they use, I believe 80 to hundred percent of their budget. So they're not out here using 50%. They were given a budget and that's the budget they're going to use. It's not like their own personal bank account. It's their company giving them the money. So I like to go on a little rant about competitively quoting for jobs. Um, and also, by the way, on a side note, 
let's say you see things on voices that you're not down with. Like you might see um, a commercial that's in perpetuity. I have a whole template for in perpetuity where I basically say, Hey, listen, I'd love to read for you. And I'd love to voice this, but I cannot do, I cannot do this commercial for you in perpetuity. And, and that I've negotiated out of so many things. Sometimes you even realize that what they put as the, what the job is, is not they, they say it's an ad and they're like, actually, you know, we're, it's just going to live on our website or actually we only need to use it for two years. You can negotiate out of a lot more things than you think of. So you also might be slumping because you're just ignoring opportunities. You're like, ah, I'm not even going to bother. Or they said in perpetuity or they, that budget's too low. Did you even try to negotiate? You know, it's like, what's the worst that can happen? They say, no, they don't shortlist you. Okay. Well, you tried. Um, and can you look at your business with an objective, with an objective perspective? Um, my tip, my hot tip from my marketing background is conduct an SWOT analysis. And that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So when you think about yourself as a voice actor and you think about your business, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? And what are your threats? And write them down. And that kind of helps you problem solve your way out of these types of situations. Okay. So what am I at? Oh yeah. Maybe it's a combo. Maybe it's a little bit of this. Maybe it's like a little bit of you and a little bit of not you. And one of the reasons that I took you through the data of all of the months of the last year and a half was I know that January is notoriously kind of a slow time now because I have my data to back me up after the holidays, people are just coming back. It doesn't really start picking up until the middle of January, even if that the summer can be slow sometimes, right? Because people are going on vacation. Kids are getting out of school. Kids are going back to school. Kids are, you know, people are graduating. All these things are happening during the summer. So sometimes you might find that like June is notoriously slow. So I don't really get like, you know, June was fine for me. Um, but the year before it was like, I don't remember, it was not great. So I was just like, okay. I mean, the data shows that it's not a great time of year sometimes for voiceover. That doesn't mean that some people might not be booking their butts off, but just traditionally, it doesn't feel like a great time. Whereas the second half of the year feels great. <laughs> so I, as we are heading into August, September, October, November, I'm like, I get more and more excited. Cause I'm like, yeah, this is my peak time, baby. I'm coming alive. <laughs> so having that data to back you up will really help you. So like I said, it might be a little bit you and it might be a little bit, not you. If you have questions, um, again, my website is ginascarpa.com. My website also for my studio, positivevoicesct.com. The name of my coaching group is Positively Voiceover. We do weekly workouts, monthly workshops. We do contests and giveaways. So today I just gave away like an I Love Voiceover mug and a one-on-one -on -one coaching with Ariana Ratner, who is an awesome video game coach. Um, we've done workshops with agents and casting directors, and we just did one about the Mid-Atlantic accent for voiceover. We did one about diversity and inclusion in voiceover. So, um, but feel free to just reach out to me, email me. I, I love to talk voiceover, especially help you with your voices profiles. Uh, it's one of my specialties. Um, okay. So I'll turn it back over to Kyle and thanks for listening to my little presentation. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gina. That was uh, a lot of great information. <laughs> And definitely uh, something that I think, you know, everybody should be utilizing, like you said, whether you're in a slump now, or if it's more so to prevent a slump in the future, definitely uh, brush up on those tips there. 